Hello everybody, this is lesson 9.7 and what you see on the screen right now is the answers to the last two graphs from your 9.6 notes page. So please pause the video here for a moment and check your answers. Both of these graphs actually look like a spiral right now. The one on the bottom is what we call the spiral of Archimedes. The one on the top, however, is not actually a spiral because we only graphed from zero to pi. But with today's lesson, you're going to learn more about this graph and then we're going to complete the graph for all of the other values of theta so we can see the complete graph. So go ahead and pause the video now and check your answers from that worksheet. You also should have submitted that worksheet through the Teams app and turned it in for your first assignment. So go ahead, pause the video now before we continue. All right, welcome back. Let's continue on then with our lesson 9.7 notes. So on your note page, you're gonna see that we have here tests for symmetry. So we can test if a graph has symmetry, just like we did with the um, coordinate plane and the XY Cartesian coordinates. So we looked for X axis symmetry and we looked for y-axis symmetry um, on those graphs. Here we're going to have, we also could have done symmetry over y equals x or even symmetry over some line. Here we're going to look for three different types of symmetry. First one is the symmetry with respect to the line theta equals pi over 2. So the line theta equals pi over 2 is this line right here. So it's kind of like what we think of as our y-axis on the other um, on the Cartesian coordinate system. So if I have a coordinate here, I'm just going to rewrite that. We're going to start with a generic coordinate, any coordinate named r comma theta. So I have that coordinate of r comma theta. And if I have symmetry over the line theta equals pi over 2, then I have my new coordinate over here. And we're going to figure out how could we label this new coordinate over here. So what we know right now is we know that this angle right here this angle, we call this theta. We also know that that angle is congruent to this angle. This would also be theta. So we have two different formulas that we're going to write. One of these formulas is going to be with a positive r, the other with a negative r. So if I go positive r, means I'm going to go out this same direction of r. So there's my r. And then I'm going to rotate all the way to here. Then that whole big angle is going to be what? So if you think about it, well, if I were to go all the way to here, that would be pi, but that's too far. So if I go back just to that little bit, that little bit is theta. So I'm going to write that as pi minus theta. So we have r comma pi minus theta. Okay, that's with the positive r. Then I'm also going to write it with a negative r. So I'm going to start off with negative r comma. And now if I start at negative r, I want to think about how do I get to that same location. So negative r would go r in the negative direction here. And now I'm going to rotate this angle here. And so that angle is just theta. But because I am going clockwise now, it's going to be negative theta. So I have negative r comma negative theta. And that's our symmetry with respect to theta equals pi over 2. Now symmetry with respect to the polar axis. So our polar axis is like our old x-axis, so right here. So again, we start with our generic point as r comma theta. I'm just going to rewrite that because it's a little blurry. r comma theta. And we're going to get to this point down here. We're trying to figure out how can we rewrite our coordinate to get there. So let's first start with our positive r. So again, I'm going to move out positive r. And now I want to move this direction to get to there. Well, what I know is, again, this angle is congruent to this angle. So this is theta. This would also be theta. So I'm going in the negative direction there. So I just have r comma negative theta. All right, now for negative r. Negative r, so if I go negative r, I'm gonna go this direction, that r units. And now I'm gonna rotate around this way to get to this point. And so if I think about what I'm gonna do there, it's gonna be the same as what I did on the last one. So if starting here, I go all the way to pi, that's too far, I'm going to reverse the amount of theta. So again, it's going to be negative r comma pi minus theta. 
for the last one, symmetry with respect to the pole. So again, let me erase that, rewrite it, it's a little bit blurry, r comma theta. So the pole, remember, is like the origin. So we're looking at rotating over the center right there, and we wanna to get to this point over here. So first one, we are gonna go positive r, so if I go positive r, okay, positive r, comma, I need to get all the way around to here, so think about that for a moment. How would you write that angle? So you should recognize that this angle is congruent to this one, which is theta and theta. So if I go all the way to here, that's pi, I have to go further, theta. So pi plus theta. Oops. Pi plus theta. And now for our negative r. So if I start negative r here, I'm gonna rotate around to here. That one should be pretty easy. Negative r comma, how far did I rotate? Hopefully you said theta. All right, so these are our rules for symmetry, and now we can use these algebraic rules to be able to test and show algebraically that certain graphs have a certain symmetry. So the first example that we're gonna look at is we're going to look at number one, which if you look at the equation here, notice, two plus eight cosine theta, that's the exact same equation from your first graph. All right, so let's first test theta equals pi over two. So for theta equals pi over two, I'm just gonna note that that's what I'm testing, theta equals pi over two. I'm gonna pick the easiest test first. So I'm gonna do the negative r negative theta, okay? So I'm gonna write down what my test is. My test is r comma theta becomes negative r comma negative theta. And if this test works, it will have the symmetry. If the test does not work, I need to check the second test to see if the second test works. If either one of the tests works, then it has the symmetry. They both do not have to work in order to have the symmetry. You only need to find that one of them works. So here, scroll up here and give myself some more space. So testing r comma theta to become negative r comma negative theta. So I'm gonna plug in negative r negative theta and see if I result in the same equation. So I have here, my original equation is r equals two plus eight cosine of theta. So when I make r negative r and when I make theta negative theta, do I get the same original equation? Well, we know from our even and odd functions that eight cosine of negative theta is the same as eight cosine of theta. So does this equal the original? No, so it's not true. So now I'm gonna test the other option for theta equals pi over two symmetry. So the other option is r comma theta becomes r comma pi minus theta, okay? So here, if I take my original equation again, so r equals two plus eight cosine of theta, I'm gonna replace the theta, the r stays as r, and then I have two plus eight times the cosine of pi minus theta. So pi minus theta, I can expand using my sum and difference formulas. So I have r equals two plus and then I have eight times the quantity of, so this is gonna be cosine of pi times the cosine of theta plus the sine of pi, whoops, the sine of pi times the sine of theta. So if you need to, review your even and odd identity, or not your even and odd, but your sum and difference identities from chapter five. So going through this and simplifying then, r equals 2 plus 8. The cosine of pi is what? And the, then cosine of theta. So since cosine of pi is negative 1, I have negative cosine of theta plus, oops, I don't want to close that yet, plus, then the sine of pi is what? 0, so plus 0. And then simplify and get r equals 2 minus 8 cosine of theta. Does that equal the original? No. So it does not have theta equals pi over two symmetry. No theta equals pi over two symmetry. 
All right, moving on to the next type of symmetry. So let's do polar axis. So for polar axis symmetry, okay. So polar axis, let's just call it PA. Our first test, do this simple one, R comma theta changes to R comma negative theta. So here, again, plugging into the original, I'll just plug it in right away. So I have R equals two plus eight cosine of negative theta. And we know cosine of negative theta is just the same as cosine theta. And so that's the original. So we do have polar axis symmetry. And then the last one, we're looking for pole symmetry. So pole symmetry. This one here, our first test, the simple one, r comma theta is negative r comma theta. So plugging that in, we have r equals two plus, oops, negative r equals two plus eight cosine of theta. Nope, that's not the original. The second one is r comma pi plus theta. Whoops. r comma theta first becomes r comma pi plus theta. So plugging that one in, I have r equals 2 plus 8 cosine of pi plus theta. So expanding, I have 8 times cosine pi cosine theta minus sine of pi sine of theta. Well, we know this part gives us 0, and cosine of pi is a negative 1. And so then what we have is r equals 2 minus 8 cosine of theta. So again, that one does not work. So we have no pole symmetry. Oops, I forgot to write up here. So therefore, polar axis symmetry. So the only symmetry we have here is polar axis symmetry. And this is the end of the first example. I'm going to stop the video here and create a part two just to keep the video under 15 minutes.